So every three minutes, somebody in the United States is diagnosed with a blood cancer, including leukemia, and for many, their only hope is a cure, for a cure rather, is a bone marrow transplant. A program called Be the Match is working to connect donors with people who need life-saving transplants. Here to tell us about the program is Joseph Wilson, donor Landon Bennett, and Lynn Clark, who was recently diagnosed with a blood cancer. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much for being here as well. Joseph, tell us what Be the Match is all about. Yeah, so Be the Match is the national marrow donor program. And what we do is facilitate the stem cells, actually, from the marrow in order to save lives of people with blood cancers. There's about 70 different blood cancers and disorders, wow. like leukemia and also sickle cell disease mm -hmm. that are curable through an identified donor like Landon, who signed up for the registry with the cheek swab. They enter in and then they're one of the one in 430 that actually match to a patient in need, which is pretty incredible. And then they facilitate that donation like it's a blood donation, not an actual procedure that's done through a surgical means, but it's similar to donating blood that Landon can definitely talk more about. But we're the program that saves lives for patients with blood cancers That's like that. Lynn. Now, it's a complicated match process, yes. right? It's not just like it, blood typing. I wish There's it were so like blood typing because then we wouldn't, Lynn would already have found her match. Right. It's about a needle in a haystack is what we're looking for because we're looking at the immune system types to match to the patient so that the patient doesn't actually reject the donation. So we're looking for a specific type of their antibodies that will match from the donor to the patient, which is why we collect those cheek swabs. Got it. Now, Lynn, tell me about your diagnosis. What are you diagnosed with? Acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And how are you feeling at this point? Uh, so I was diagnosed a year ago, right before Christmas, and I underwent seven months of pretty intense chemo mm -hmm. at Swedish Cancer Institute. And so I felt pretty crummy through that whole ordeal. Right. I mean, that's not even the proper words to use. It was pretty right. bad. Okay and uh, was in remission for about five months and just relapsed. Okay, so I'm currently on something called blenitumumab, which is an immunotherapy that's um, pretty new to this mm -hmm. street. And it targets, um, it's a bispecific, anyways, just consider it to be snipers that are in there trying to kill off the right. leukemia cells. And we're rooting for them. We are, if they, if they miss one, it's gonna come back. Yeah. And so once I go back into remission, which is what this um, immunotherapy is designed for, then I can receive a stem cell transplant, and that's really my only, um, right now, my only option to stay alive. And so a stem cell transplant. You're waiting for a match. I'm waiting for point. a match. Yes. I can't even imagine what that's like. Um, the waiting of this is something that we all kind of have to wrestle with in our own minds. How would we feel if we were waiting? And what I would want is everybody to go get their cheeks swabbed. Yes, you would. So let's see if we can't get that yeah. to happen. Um, Landon, how did you get involved in the program? You know, it was actually a pretty simple story. I, I just donated blood with a friend in college and he mentioned he was gonna join the stem cell registry and order a swab kit and ask if I wanted to do it with him. I didn't really even know what, what I was signing up for when I signed up, but I figured if he's doing it, I might as well do it too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I sent in my cheek swab kit, and then uh, kind of that, that got the ball rolling with my involvement would be the match. And you actually were matched. I was. What uh, happened? So about six months later, I got a call uh, that, that I was potentially a match with a cancer patient and asked if I wanted to do further blood work to see if I really was as good of a match as, I, as they thought I might be. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of started to think, okay, what did I actually sign up for here? <laughs> what, what was that swab I sent in? Uh, so I did further blood work. A couple months later, they call me again and say, hey, the, the patient's doctors decided to go with you as the match. You're a, you're a perfect you know, 10 out of 10 HLA type match. Do you want to go forward with this? Uh, at that point, kind of the gravity started to hit me that I, I maybe wasn't a match for this person, but I was the match. The there, match. Was, there was a reason the they were chance. calling me. Exactly. Uh, so then the, the donation process is actually, is actually pretty simple. Uh, I did about, I did the, the style that 85% of donations turn out to be, which is uh, peripheral blood stem cell, they call it, which basically means uh, I, I got shots for four days before my donation day to kind of boost up my stem cell count, kick mm -hmm. my immune system into overdrive. And then on donation day, I, I went into, uh, laid in a hospital bed, they, they pulled blood out of my right arm, spun it out in a, uh, centrifuge, pumped it back into my left arm. I watched, I watched a couple movies, uh, and I'd say overall there was very minor pain. I mean, there was some side effects from the shots, but I went to the Mariners game the night before I donated, so it really was not, <laughs> not anything crippling. And have you you've met the woman 
whose life you helped save. I did. So, uh, so I, I filled up the stem cells. They shipped them off to this person who I didn't know. But in, after a year, we could reveal our I identities there to each other. Uh, so we started writing emails back and forth, kind of sharing our own experiences on, you know, she was in Lynn's shoes of receiving this stem yeah. cell transplant. Uh, and she actually told me during those emails that uh, she had a grandson who, based on her initial prognosis of less than a year before she found me as a match, she wasn't supposed to live long enough to meet. And now she got to spend a couple days a week with him, and she thought of me every day she got to spend with him, which... That changes everything. It's, that changes it, everything. Joseph, how do we, um, what are the, are there age limits? How yeah. do we go about So what we test for free, the 18 to 44 year olds, as they have the longest time of being on the registry, because it takes some time for you to actually match with the patient. Right. So we like to get folks within that 18 to 44 to swab. They can actually text a code. We have the code LYNN, L-Y-N-N, that they can text to the number 61474 to order their swab kit directly to their home. That way they do their cheek swab, they register with us, it in and then we can actually type it and hope that they could be the match for Lynn or at least a match for one of the 10,000 plus patients who search every year for their life-saving stem cell match. Is there any reason for somebody older than that to give a try as well? So one of the things is physicians ultimately search for a younger donor with the patient as the younger donors lead to better outcomes yeah. in the event that we really ensure that having the young donors strapping young men like Landon or women who are there to donate their healthy stem cells, we have a less risk of graft versus host disease, which is another part that we're playing to ensure that patients like Lynn don't actually reject the donation. Well, very good. Let's mm -hmm. get on this. We'll put all the information awesome. on our website, and we wish you the very best. Thank you. Thank you all Thank very you. much.